On today's episode, with your help, we are going to choose the greatest pedals of the last 20 years, from the year 2000 when I graduated high school to right now. We're gonna do it together. This is the most important thing you've ever been involved with. Trust me, I know what you do. The rest of your life's over here, pretty basic, not a lot going on, and then there's this. Let's roll, let's get into this. This is, this is your day. To choose the greatest pedals of this century, the last 20 years, is no small task, one that I do not completely trust my opinions or observations on. So I have appointed, chosen, and elected my own pedal delegates from the pedal world. I have Jamie of Earthquaker, I have Matthew of Disaster, and Brian of Wampler along with me, and we will cast our votes on our favorite pedals. We are gonna use several categories and lay those out. Overdrive distortion is a category, fuzz, compression, modulation, time, which includes delay or reverb, and we have a category called weird or other. We're gonna cast our votes. You need to be thinking about yours because at the end of this, you're gonna vote in the comments, and we're gonna to choose together the greatest pedals of the last 20 years because pedals are a democracy, and you're included. Hi, this is Jamie from Earthquaker Devices. I'm gonna run down my top six pedals of the last 20 years. So first, under Overdrive, I'll go with the Timmy. It's a pedal that lived up to its hype and then some. You know, really blends into an amp perfectly, adds just a little bit of grit or it can send it over the edge. For fuzz, I'll go with the Dam Tone Bender Mach 2, which I realize is a clone of an old pedal, but it's a perfect clone of an old pedal. For time-based effects, I'll go with the Strymon El Capistan. Great tape delay emulator. Love the way the repeats saturate. Just dirty enough, sits in a mix great. It's also the pedal that changed my mind on tap tempo, uh, which maybe that sounds crazy, but I used to think delays didn't need tap tempo. For modulation, I'll go with the Death by Audio Robot, which I think a lot of people think of as fuzz, but I really like the robot voice setting. Um, and it's an excellent looking pedal and a great use of the robot voice chip. For compression, I gotta say, I don't usually use compressors, but if I do, I tend to reach for the Keeley compressor. Even if you're not using it as a compressor, I think it adds just a little something special to the signal, like a little sparkle. And for my last pedal, under the weirdo category, I'll go with the Sub Decay M3 guitar synth. Is amazing. It's pretty much everything that I could want out of a guitar synthesizer. I wish I made it. So that's it. All right, Jamie's got some good solid picks. Let's go through these. First of all, I don't have the Sub Decay M3, but I did print it and take some scissors and perfectly cut it out and lay it on the floor. And it's okay that I don't have this pedal. I don't have to have every pedal. That's just silly. I don't have this pedal. Am I gonna say that? I just have to have that pedal. Keely compressor. 2001 is when this first dropped. I mean, this is early boutique, very important pedal. We have the Timmy from early 2000s, I think 2004. This started the transparent overdrive craze. Uh, Paul's an amazing dude, so yeah, no brainer there. Fantastic choice. His modulation is a really fun one. Uh, it is the Robot by Death by Audio. I hit up Oliver, he overnighted this to me. I plugged it in, I put it on arpeggiator mode and it's crazy. Now the El Capistan for delay, this is possibly my favorite tape delay pedal. It, I get torn between two or three, but this is awesome. I'm gonna set it to like a, a rhythmic, but ambient kind of washy delay. It's gonna be really fun. And I don't have a damn built Tone Bender Mark II. I have some other of his products, but they're all amazing. I'm just gonna use an original Mark II, the Vox version. And I think what we'll do is we'll, We'll create a song here, and then we're just gonna change the song, kind of like Blue Oyster Cult would or some 70s metal band. I don't know what'll happen.
Hey, this is Matthew Farrow from Alexander Pedals and Disaster Area Designs. Best pedals of the last 20 years. First up, drive pedal. I'm going to say the Source Audio Multi-Wave Distortion. The Multi-Wave Distortion is really cool. It does a fold-back distortion, which is something that's really hard to do with analog pedals. Fuzz pedal. Again, this is tough. I don't use a lot of fuzz, so I'm going to go with my other favorite drive pedal, which is the WMD Geiger Counter and Geiger Counter Pro. These are digital pedals that have wavetable and digital distortion. They give you things that you can't get through a tube screamer or a crank amp. There's no real other way to get the same kinds of sounds that the Geiger counter will give you. For time-based pedals, I have to pick the Boss Terra Echo, the TE2. It does some things that really aren't available anywhere else. I don't know really what the secret, the magic is of the Terra Echo. Uh, I think the world's just waiting for that one person to use it on a huge song before they're incredibly expensive and discontinued and we all have to pay $400 for them. And modulation. The greatest modulation pedal of all time is without a doubt the Digitech Space Station the XP300. That doesn't fall under our time period, so I'll do a shameless plug here and say my favorite modulation pedal of the last 20 years is the Alexander Pedals Marshmallow. It does a lot of the same kinds of things as the Space Station, as the Boss PS3, but it does it in a fun and funky way. Now, it's not really a modulation pedal per se. It's not a chorus or a tremolo or a flanger, but it can do a lot of those sounds, plus a whole host of other crazy weird things by virtue of the pitch shifting and the clock control. The compressor is an easy one. My favorite compressor is the Diamond BCP-1, the bass compressor. I've got two of the big ones and one of the junior versions. They're all incredibly useful. As a bass player, I really like it because it evens out the difference between pick style and finger style playing. And for my other selection, my weird selection, this one is really easy for me. It's the Pen Audio Future Impact. The Deep Impact is one of the greatest pedals of all time, and the Future Impact is the updated, improved version of that. I have one on my board. I never take it off. Unless there's a better version that comes out, I can't see ever swapping that out for anything. All right, Matthew I chose because I knew he would have a totally different angle from me or Jamie or Brian because he's very digital. He does a lot of coding. He's a different style musician. Brilliant guy. Let's start with the Source Audio multi-wave distortion. This is the first era Source Audio. Uh, it's in a funky little cool enclosure. This pedal is bonkers. I have it set on what's called fold back number nine. It is so aggressive, but yet so good and subtle. I, I don't know how to describe it. So that's the distortion setting I'm gonna use. It's an amazing pedal and I love that it's nothing like what I would think about distortion, but then when I plug it in, I'm in love with it. The Echo, the TE2, this pedal is really cool. I think it came out 2012, 2013. It is a boss delay that feels like an effect that you've never heard. It does echo, but it's doing all kinds of sweeping things as well. So I'm gonna set this to a long feedback that kind of moves and sweeps, use it off and on. I don't have the diamond bass compressor, but I have the diamond compressor. Amazing comp, I mean, time tested, kid approved, I don't know. Now his shameless plug, I've used this on some episodes. I'm gonna set it up like a doubling chorus modulation pitch thing, it's wild. This thing has so many sounds, I've barely touched the surface. The future impact, it's incredible. I'm gonna use setting 91 straight out of the box and it's funky town. Now I don't have the Geiger counter, so again, Printer, scissors laid on the floor. It's good enough. I'm totally fine that I, for some reason, used to have one of these and can't find it. I don't have this pedal, and I'm gonna say that. I just have to have that pedal. It's fine.
favorites for the past 20 years. Greatest overdrive pedal. It's gonna change from day to day, but right that, right now, this very second, probably the Analog Man King of Tone. For whatever reason, I'm really into blues breaker type stuff this week. The Analog Man King of Tone just really is uh, it is such a good circuit and, and, and Mike did such great mods to that circuit to, to make it what it is. Buzz pedals, I would say probably one of my favorites that I, I, I've loved to use and I love talking about is the Pelotar, like a noise works bleed. And it's it's a great pedal if you haven't seen it. Looks like, just like a Klon, but it's really two different styles of fuzzes inside. And it's, it's a great sounding pedal. I always love the look that people give me if they think it's a Klon and I kick it on. Delay and reverb. You know, delay, two of them. When I first played the um, the, the Line 6 DL4 years ago, that to me, it was like, oh, wow, this is fantastic. This is amazing. I loved it. Still like it. You got to give props to Strymon in an area like reverb and delay. Like, they just completely nailed it. Just knocked it out of the park. The Strymon is the obvious choice there. And, uh, you know, of course, the Line 6 as well. My opinion on modulations is probably going to be a little different than what most people might think. One of the things I love is the different algorithms that Eventide came out with with the H9 that uh, that you can download or um, you know and tweak all you want to, and that's what I like to do. I like to take those algorithms and tweak them to how I like. Their use of the app is one of the reasons why I probably like that device the most for modulation type stuff. Favorite compressor over past 20 years? Gotta say Keeley compressor on this. The Keeley compressor, which is what made me even think about the Ego compressor. I created the Ego because I love the Keeley so much. Huge respect for Robert in that area, for sure. And then other weird things for the past 20 years. I would be even more of an idiot than I normally am if I didn't talk about the, well, what I have called on video, the Miku, but apparently I mispronounced it because I'm an idiot and I called it Miku and not Miku. That one is a lot of fun. A lot of fun to make videos for and still a lot of fun to pull out and just kind of screw around people. Brian's choices are fabulous. That's a good word for him. Uh, really good perspective on pedals. He has a lot of knowledge and I love the sounds and the pedals that he chose. So let's go through these. Now, the first thing to talk about with his choices is that there's a problem and the problem is one that affected me as well. It is the fact that I really wanted to use the DL4 also, but the DL4 was released October of 1999. I know it's only two months. I mean, we're talking probably less than 60 days, but a rule's a rule. And to my own demise, it's disqualified. Get out of here. All right, let's go with the timeline. This came out in 2011. In the same way that the DL4 opened the door to digital DSP finally being accepted, valued, and used as a serious tool in guitar, the timeline kind of crushed the door down. It's an amazing pedal. I'm gonna use the ice setting, and I'm gonna do like this rhythmic ambient thing as well, because apparently that's all I do with delays, and that's fine, it's okay. There is a pedal that he mentioned, the Pelotar. Let me tell you a story here. I bought this pedal the moment I got his memos, and I ordered it overnight at it, and USPS lost it. So, literally, they lost it. So, I uh, printed it, cut it out with scissors. I'm totally fine. I, I'm not gonna buy it again, that would be crazy. I don't have this pedal, and I'm gonna see that. I just have to have that pedal. Yeah, so we're gonna use the Half Horse. This is by Pelican Noiseworks. It's one side of that pedal. Uh, it's a fuzz pedal, really cool, really great choice. I wish I had the other one, but you know, at least I have a pedal to play. King of Tone, 2003. This is the first boutique blues breaker. Um, I think about my own morning glory kind of following in these footsteps. This pedal's really important and such a legendary, legendary pedal. Now the Eventide H9, I've used this on several boards and I love that he mentioned that ability to get in here and build modulations. So I'm using a setting here. I went with the undulator, uh, F8 in the undulator. It's really cool. You'll hear it. it's rhythmic as well. And then for weird pedal, Miku Stomp. I'm gonna do the uh, PA setting, P-A-H-H. -H. I think that's right, I don't know. Here we go.
Last but not least are my choices. I mean, it is my show, and I want to I want to butt in here because I want an opinion. You know, that's what I want. Here's what I'm going with. For the delay, I'm gonna go with the 2003 Giga delay. If you told me I had to pick one delay for the rest of my life, it's this over everything that exists, even the timeline, even the fancy stuff out there. I have played so many gigs with this, so many sessions. It's awesome. I'm gonna force it on other people I know already. I bought one for a friend. Um, they're gonna have to use it. It's important to me. I'm gonna use the twist setting and it has a cool feature. It's like an Easter egg that's in the manual, but nobody reads the manual, so it's an Easter egg. You hold this down and it oscillates like to a pitch and back. It's amazing. You'll hear it. Modulation, the instant lo-fi junkie, my Zvex. This was designed by Joel of Chase Bliss. This is when he worked for Zvex before Chase Bliss existed. I'm gonna do like a warbly lo-fi flanger type setting, really cool. I'm gonna use the Keeley compressor as well. It's great, kind of noon up on all the knobs, just kind of let it be there. I'm gonna do my own shameless plug because I love this pedal. I made it for me and I just have to choose it because I don't want to use any other overdrive. It's the Morning Glory. I'm gonna leave it on the whole time. Yeah, it is what it is. I'm not ashamed that I love this pedal so much. And fuzz, I'm gonna do the supersonic fuzz gun, Death by Audio. That's two votes for Death by Audio. Oliver's killing it. I'm gonna set this up with the bias so it squelches back after a note has died. You'll hear that, it's awesome. And I also choose this, the Miku Stomp. I'm gonna use the random one setting. It's gonna be crazy. Just hold on to your horses, if you have horses. Now that you have heard my votes and my three chosen delegates votes, it's now your turn. Your vote really matters in the comments below. I want you to use these exact categories and type in what you believe to be the greatest pedal of each category. We're gonna do our best to actually count every single vote in the comments. There are several people in the room right now. I'm not gonna make eye contact with them because they're freaking out because they know I'm gonna ask them to count these and it's totally fine. It's, it's, t they're okay. I promise it's not abusive at all to have to count everything you say. We're gonna do this, we're gonna publish it. We're gonna, we're basically gonna make this uh, Associated Press release. It's gonna end up in medical journals. It's gonna end up online. It's gonna end up magazines. Like, I don't know, Field and Stream might even pick this up. With that said, thanks for doing this. Let's go to record time. Today's record time is a tough one because deep down in my soul, you know me, I wanted to show you my favorite record of the last 20 years, but I can't do that. It's totally impossible. So I spent way too much time prowling and I said, hey, I'm not gonna try, but I'm just gonna show one of the greatest records that has definitely impacted me in my life, musically, and it happens to be in the last 20 years. It is 2014's Morning Phase by Beck. It's a fantastic record. I think it represents this cool thing that happened in the 2000s and as we got closer to where we are now, this record has like ambience, country western vibes, rock vibes, amazing songwriting, great guitars. It's just a real neat mix of different tones, sounds and thoughts, songwriting. Anyway, that's what I'm giving you today. If you haven't heard this, 
you're definitely missing out. Check it out. And in the comments below, let me know what you think about it. And if you dare try, tell me your favorite record of the last 20 years. If you can do that, you'll win the fact that you did that. And that's, a, that's an award that you should carry around for the rest of your life, or at least the next 20 years. Thanks so much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I am definitely enjoying the tens of hundreds of millions of thousands of comments of your votes that are that are pouring into the comment section right now. I'm so pumped for that. We're going to sort through those. It's it's an easy task. We'll be fine. So if you like this episode, hit like, subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon to get notifications of future episodes. Check out thejhsshow.com for shirts and other things you don't need. And also, if you'd like to support the channel and the work of pedal history that we do, check out the Patreon. There's a link in the description below. I have nothing else to say. This is a fantastic episode. Probably the greatest thing I've ever done in my life. I didn't amount to much until this. Now that I've filmed this, I can move on. I'm probably going to sell everything. Let's, all right, let's wrap it up.